Now, like I said, this book is written not only by not only by Lieutenant General Hal Moore is how he retired in this book. I'll refer to him as Lieutenant Colonel or sometimes I guess I'm just uh, disrespectful and call him Hal Moore. I don't mean it disrespectfully, but anyways, Hal Moore wrote the book, but he also wrote the book along with another guy named Joe Galloway. And you know, you know what a ghostwriter is? Yeah. Yeah, ghostwriter. Well, this is so a ghostwriter writes a, bo- a person's book, but no one's supposed to know it. Mm-hmm. And then there's people that write the book, but they get credit for it. Right. And you might think that's a situation here looking at the title because you've got Lieutenant General Harold Moore retired mm-hmm. and Joseph L. Galloway. Like, you know, it doesn't mm-hmm. say any service thing. Well, in this particular case, that could give you an absolutely wrong impression because Joe Galloway was a reporter, a combat reporter who was v- obviously he was very courageous and and basically got after it for lack of a better mm. word. Mm. So I'll go in where they introduce him a little bit. Back to the book. UPI reporter Joe Galloway, a 23 year old native of Refugio, Texas, marched with us. When he hooked up with us, he carried on his shoulder an M16 rifle, which the Special Forces commander, Major Charles Beckwith, had handed him when the fight was over. Galloway told Beckwith, that strictly speaking, under the Geneva Convention, he was a civilian non-combatant. Beckwith's response, no such thing in these mountains, boy. Take that rifle. So if you know anything about Charles Beckwith, Major Charlie Beckwith, it's the guy that created Delta Force. Mm. Complete uh, badass warrior. And he was a Special Forces commander in Vietnam and, and was one of the first people that apparently Galloway worked with. And Galloway said, you know, you better arm yourself. So here's Galloway talking. Galloway remembers. My first time out with Hal Moore's 1st Battalion, 7th Cavalry, was a hellish walk into the sun to a remote Montegard mountain village. We got into a patch of brush and wait a minute vines so thick and thorny that every step had to be carved out with machetes. We covered maybe 300 yards in four hours and forded a fast running chest deep mountain stream just as darkness fell, then huddled in our ponchos, wet and freezing all night long. At first light, I pinched off a small piece of C4 plastic explosive from the emergency supply in my pack and used it to boil up a canteen of water for coffee. If you lit C4 very carefully, you could be drinking hot coffee in maybe 30 seconds. If you were careless, it blew off your arm. Over a first cigarette, I watched Moore's men. First, they shaved. Shaved? Up here, I was amazed. Then the colonel himself, blonde, jut-jawed, and very intense, a son of Bardstown, Kentucky, and West Point, walked by on this morning rounds with the sergeant major, with sergeant major Plumley. Moore looked at me over and said, "We all shave in my outfit, reporters included." My steaming coffee water went for a wash and a shave, and I gained a measure of respect for the man. Daily discipline in all things. 